Hi, so I'm Haley, if you don't know me, and I'm gonna read five thrillers in five days because my boyfriend just went out of town to visit his family and I have nothing else to do. I'm gonna read them anyways. So I thought I would vlog it and let you guys know my thoughts. So yeah, I have never made a booktube video before. Ooh, sorry if you can see my little puppies squirming around in the background. They're having a great little time back there. Um, I've done some cringy story times in the past, but um, I was sitting here reading so quickly and they were all thrillers and I was super excited to do it. And I was like, wow, I'm going to read five thrillers in five days. That's catchy. Maybe I should make it a video because I watch videos like that all the time and I think that would be a fun video for other people to watch. So here I am. Um, hi, Mochi. Looking at back there. What a guy. So if you haven't met my dogs before, this is Mochi and this is Boba. They are both chihuahuas and I am absolutely obsessed with them. Um, okay, so these are going to be the five thrillers that I am reading or have read. So I'm already two days into this challenge. Actually, we have three days to go. Um, the first book that I read was actually Blood Orange by Harriet Tice. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you my thoughts on this uh, before I get into the reading vlog for the other books. So this was the first new thriller that I read or new to me. I'm not actually sure when this was released, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it three and a half stars, rounded up to four on Goodreads. There were some points when, I don't want to say it was problematic, but <laughs> some of the characters were very unlikable and there's a lot of misogyny in this book so if that triggers you makes you uncomfortable anything like that probably don't pick this one up it did bother me a lot and i think it was used as a device to make you hate the villains that you're supposed to hate in the book but i think also sometimes it was unintentional like with the lover or the main uh love interest it um kind of got on my nerves <laughs> so yeah the this book, let me just go ahead and tell you what this book is about. So the description can be kind of misleading. It sounds like you're going to get multiple perspectives on um, like kind of like a serial killer, our main protagonist who is a lawyer, and then another murderer that she is representing. So you think you're going to get multiple perspectives based on the synopsis, which I love thrillers with multiple perspectives. I think it makes it so interesting. You can reveal bits and pieces here and there, and I think it really adds to the story. But this one did not do that. We got the perspective of our main character and protagonist. God, what's her name? Okay, I know it's not a five-star thriller if I cannot remember her name. Um... Allison her name's Allison um, but she was kind of an annoying character to me uh, she definitely wasn't like a plain little Mary Jane but she wasn't very likable either I don't even know how to explain this right now like I just didn't like her Sorry, Allison, <laughs> I didn't like you. Um, so basically what this book is about is you know that there's something ominous that's about to happen. You know somebody's gonna get killed. Like there's just an air of murder, okay? You know somebody's about to get killed and you know there's a killer out there but you don't know which character it is. And you're also following Allison and her crumbling marriage and her affair that she can't quite seem to figure out and her struggles with alcoholism and not quite being the best mother ever. No one uh, is giving Allison a number one mom award because she is um, cheating on her husband and getting too drunk that she can't come home and tuck in her child and yeah, so she's not winning any awards for her motherhood, <laughs> but 
we're following her and all of her struggles and one of the things that we follow with Allison is her murder case it's her very first murder case and it's about this woman who killed her husband and she's pleading guilty so it's about her kind of comparing herself to that woman and she hates her husband and maybe she'll kill him that's what it like leads you to believe throughout the whole thing I'm not gonna spoil you and tell you what actually happens um but the big twist and what actually happened was not a big surprise to me I actually did guess it before the big reveal at the end uh the thing that I didn't guess was how it ended I thought it was going to end in a drastically different way with Allison just being torn to shreds you're a terrible mother you can never see your children again but that's not actually how it ended up so it was a little bit of a happy ending but I'm not going to give away the big twist at the end I did enjoy that twist but the one before that when you find out who the killer is I guess it like probably 50 pages in so yeah overall not bad very entertaining very quick read it's set in England which if you know anything about my reading taste I love thrillers set in England yes give me Ruth Ware give me Lisa Jewell give me all of that I need British slang I need you to live in a flat and kill people okay so right after I finished blood orange I actually picked up my book of the month book for this month which is May I'm literally going crazy in quarantine but I picked up the guest list because literally everyone and their mother cannot stop talking about this and this was about a 4.5 star for me I bumped it down half a star because I could kind of see where it was going and it included a trope that I do not really enjoy in my thrillers that I like to read. So I will tell you what that is. It might be a spoiler. So I'm going to put a timestamp right here if you want to skip it. So the trope that this book included, if you don't know what this book's about, let me start with that. If you don't know what this book's about, it's all of these people on an island for a wedding and somebody gets murdered by somebody else and basically the whole time you're trying to work backwards and find out who done it. It's a very classic Agatha Christie-esque storyline and I really enjoyed that part of it. But this trope, I hate it so much. It's when you think you know who a character is and you think you know who another character is because they're going by different names and then you find out they're the same person like really <sighs> who actually goes by two different names like i want to know is there really a person on earth who like half the people in their life know them as this name and a few other people know them as this like no i don't think that's real it's really difficult for me to suspend my disbelief in that respect so that was the only thing that I didn't enjoy, but I did not see the twist coming, even though I didn't really enjoy it. Big reveals that showed up in this book, I didn't see really any of them coming. Um, and I thought the killer was gonna be somebody else, but I guess the person who died before it was revealed. Um, but yeah, I overall thought it was really good. The atmosphere was awesome. It was like thunderstorming like crazy when I was reading this and it was like, it was storming on the island and I was like, wow, I'm just on this island for this wedding reading this book that's happening around me in the thunderstorm. So yeah, I would really highly recommend this, especially if you enjoy that trope. I personally don't. But if you do like that in your thriller, this is a good one. So next, I'm going to start The Wife Between Us uh, by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I, I have mixed feelings about their writing. I really enjoyed An Anonymous Girl. I think the story was a little bit predictable. I definitely guessed a lot of the big reveals before they happened. But I really enjoyed the writing and the drama of it all. I'm also, if you don't know, I have my BA in psychology. I'm going to school for mental health counseling. So I really enjoy the psychological aspects because I've worked on psychological studies in the past. I'm actually doing one now. So I really enjoyed the aspects of An Anonymous Girl. So I would definitely recommend that. I cannot quite say the same for You Are Not Alone. It wasn't my favorite. I think it was a tad annoying and problematic, but let's not get into that because we're talking about this girl. So 
I'm gonna start the wife between us and I will update you and vlog myself reading. So, <laughs> I am 160 pages into The Wife Between Us. <laughs> I feel like, okay, so I'm at part two. Uh, right after the first big reveal and I feel like those 160 pages were just not needed at all like once the first reveal is revealed I feel like half of that first section could have been cut out they did the trope again that I don't like which is there's two names but it's the same person who does that who okay no this is how hello are you are you here for the rant okay uh, who this is how you know your husband's a psychopath if your name is vanessa and the only person in the whole world who calls you nelly is your husband that's fucking weird like i just have to say like that is not my name is Haley, but my boyfriend would not just be like hey charlotte like no that's a very odd and it would never happen greer and sarah so i don't know why you did that and it made the whole like first half almost very pointless to me because you think basically that the ex-wife of this man is chasing down his new soon-to-be wife his new fiance to kill her because she's a jealous crazy person and you're following both of these women and then you find out that they are the same person. Why did they do that? Like, no. So now we don't even know who the new fiance is. Who is she? We know nothing about her. And I feel like if they were going to do that, when they revealed who the actual fiance is, they should have had some character development for her before saying, oh yeah, by the way, then the actual fiance is Emma. Like, I was like, who? Who's Emma? Like, I know nothing about her now and it's very hard to get me invested into Emma. So I'm going to read a little bit more and I'll update you in a minute. All right, so I am now mm -hmm, 307 pages in. I have about 80 pages left to go of The Wife Between Us. And I really don't know how to feel. I feel like this is just kind of middle of the road. That first twist, I'm not gonna lie, really pissed me off. Um, so we'll see how it goes from here. It's gotten a little bit better as, as we learn uh, more about the history of Vanessa slash Nellie and what's his name? I literally was just reading, I don't remember. Richard and Richard, you're learning the backstory about their marriage, which I really like those chapters. I think they're really interesting. But then when it cuts to the present, I literally just don't care. Like, I just don't care about what's going on. I don't care about her trying to warn the new fiance. <laughs> I don't care about it at all. I literally, I don't care. Like, she's running around doing all these things, trying to deliver letters and um, getting fired from her job. And it's intense and she's going to take the money and cash the check. And I'm just like, I don't care, girl. Get back to the chapters when it's talking about their tumultuous marriage because I really enjoy that. I like a lot of like family and marital drama in my thrillers, so I like that, but the present day is not really intriguing me as much. So in these last 80 pages, we're gonna see if they can pull out a twist that will really get me into this and fully invested. I'm hoping there are a few more twists to go. All right, I just finished The Wife Between Us. And if you're wondering why I look a little rough, it's because I had to go to Trader Joe's and wear a mask and I like took off half my makeup on my face and then my hair got like disgusting and like anyway but here I am and I finished this book I'm actually happily surprised at the ending I did like how it wrapped up and we did get to know Emma more and 
after you read the ending, you realize why you don't get much uh, character development from Emma. And I really did like that twist at the end. So overall, I didn't really enjoy the beginning. It lagged a bit. And after the first twist, I was like, I was so close to DNFing it, but I didn't. And I'm glad that I kind of stuck with it and saw it through. I would probably give this three stars, 3.25 stars. Not that bad, pretty all right. Definitely not my favorite of the three that this author duo has written in the past. Anonymous Girl is still my favorite. Then probably You Are Not Alone and then this one. But the end saved this one from getting a super low rating from me. And next, I think I'm going to read I Found You by Lisa Jewell. So I will update you once I start that. All right, I'm about to call it a night. I just got 50 pages into this one. I'm loving it so far. Classic Lisa Jewell. It's a mystery. 50 pages in, there's already been a twist. I'm super excited to keep reading. I am halfway done with I Found You and it's no surprise that I love it. It is no different than all of Lisa Jewell's other books. Really thrilling. I'm like flying through it. Like it's a page turner for sure. So the story basically follows three stories. Two are happening at the same time, and one is happening in the 90s. Um, so, I'm pretty sure the like main man in each one of the stories are the same person, but it's not the same, the different name thing. It's not that, because I would hate that. It It's slightly different, and I don't want to give it away, but I'm pretty sure that's what the book is leading me to think but I don't think that's gonna be it. And I have a guess of what it's going to be. And if it does end up that way, bleh, it's so creepy and gross and kind of living for it. So <laughs> I'm hoping that's what happens or maybe something that will shock me, but, oh, hello. Uh, but I have a good guess of what I think it's going to end up being. And it was revealed just now at the halfway point that there was a murder that happened. So, I guess we'll find out more about that. I only have 30 pages left and I literally, hello Boba, I literally cannot put this down. It is so good, five stars already, unless the ending is like really terrible, that's the only thing that will change my mind. This might be my favorite Lisa Jewel and that's saying a lot, a lot to be continued. I just finished I Found You by Lisa Jewell. Definitely five star read. The ending was great. Those last 30 pages didn't have any huge reveals. Pretty much everything was revealed before the end of the book and then the last few pages were just tying up loose ends and there was also an epilogue which was really well written as always. I absolutely love the way Lisa Jewell does characterization, the way that she develops a character and you really get to know them and want to root for them. I love that and her style of writing, the way that she tells stories and like reveals things like a little flower opening, the more and more things are revealed. It is really awesome. I always fly through her books, no problem. At the end of every chapter you just want to keep turning the page and so this one in particular was told in three different storylines so it would be like one chapter like the first chapter was one and then the second chapter was the other one it alternates so like if something totally crazy and cliffhangery happened at the end of one storyline you would want to quickly read those two chapters to get to see what it was you know so that kept it really fast paced. It had like a very movie-like quality, like I could visualize it in my head really easily. And yeah, 
I thought it was really great and I highly recommend it. And now I'm going on to Pretty Girls. So I will update you when I'm a little bit into that book and have some thoughts to share. Good morning. I'm about halfway through Pretty Girls. I stayed up last night, probably read the first hundred pages and I just had to go to sleep. I just wasn't taking in any of the information even though I really wanted to keep reading. Um, but I got about halfway through this morning. Sorry, I look like such a wreck, by the way. I've literally been doing nothing this morning except for reading this book because I can't stop. Um, so this is my first Karen Slaughter book that I've ever read and I have to say, she lives up to all the hype that I've been hearing about. The characters are written in a way where you know their flaws, but they don't really bother you unless it's intended to, obviously, unless they're like a murderer or something or a suspected murderer, you know? Um, but the story's really interesting. There have been a ton of huge reveals just in the first half. I'm like, where is this going? I'm always kept on my toes. I don't really have any idea how this is gonna pan out. So I really like that in a thriller because usually I can guess pretty fast. Oh my God, so sorry. You can hear them scuffling back there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this and I'm probably gonna finish it. I should probably get some work done, but I really wanna finish this book today. I mean, I will finish it today. It's just a matter of, will I finish it before the sun goes down or stay up until 3 a.m.? What do you think, Boba? I will update you later. Okay. <laughs> so I just read about 50 more pages and um, safe to say, I'm shook. This book, first of all, I love it. Second of all, it reads so much like a horror movie. Oh my God, also look at this ambiance. She's reading in the storm like a horror movie. It's great, I'm living for this. But yeah, oh my God, look at my hair. Woo. Um, if you like horror movies and books that read like them, this is one for you. I gotta get back to reading now. Hello, so. I finally finished Pretty Girls. Well, not finally. I read it in a day. <laughs> but I finished Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter last night. And I really, really enjoyed it. I wanted to kind of take the night to process my feelings about it because it was a lot. <laughs> if you've never read Pretty Girls, it's about a girl who goes missing and then her sister and her dad are kind of searching for her and another girl goes missing in the present day so it's like it's a pretty classic missing girls type of story but yeah since i finished pretty girls last night i actually did complete the challenge woohoo five thrillers in five days i don't know that it's just like so satisfying to me so yay i did it and my last book pretty girls is getting five out of five stars for sure this is one of my favorite thrillers i think maybe ever um all of the plot twists hit super hard i didn't see almost any of them coming i had an inkling of where it was going to go but then it just went way off the rails further than i ever imagined um, I loved the characters, particularly Claire. I thought her character was really dynamic and interesting and I just really loved her. It definitely kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. If you like thrillers that read like horror movies, like you're in a horror movie, we're in the action, it's all happening, you will love Pretty Girls. This book actually scared me and that is very rare. <laughs> I don't get scared by many horror movies or any books anymore because I've just consumed so much thriller and horror content that it just doesn't really scare me. This book was terrifying. <laughs> I was like checking over my shoulder making sure the mask man wasn't about to come get me. I walked my dogs at like 10 p.m. when I was 50 pages away from being done and it, it was horrifying. I was like running with Boba and Mochi like, oh my god, the masked man is coming. 
even some of the moments that were supposed to be like very satisfying um this part has spoilers so just a warning if you don't want to be spoiled uh skip to here but the moment when they found julia's body like her bones the description was so graphic and horrifying and, and that was supposed to be a, a nice moment like they finally found their sister's body they've been searching for 20 years but it scared me to my core it was so scary um i also really really loved the chapters uh written from the father's perspective they were heartbreaking and beautifully written so those are all the things I really love. The only things that uh, I would consider cons is it is a extremely dark book. There are trigger warnings for basically everything. <laughs> so if you're sensitive to topics like rape, um, abduction, um, marital problems, anything, um, horrible graphic violence, blood, uh, torture then do not read this book it you will not enjoy it um and just one small thing is I some of the dialogue the way it was written was a little bit annoying to me it was a lot of she said this she asked this and I don't know that structure got a little bit distracting for me but other than that I absolutely love this book five stars across the board so overall I'm really happy with how this little challenge went and I would love to do this again I might do it with romances because that is the other genre that I really love or horror books I think it'd be really fun to do maybe not five Stephen King in five days I think that might be impossible <laughs> but something like that with Stephen King books um, overall I really enjoyed all of the books I had a little bit a plot twist issues um like i said the name thing um blood orange was a tiny bit <laughs> problematic for me but overall i love the guest list that was a five star read loved i found you that was a five star read and loved pretty girls so three out of five or five stars i'm gonna call that a success and yeah i'm super excited to do this again in, in the future because i had so much fun doing this and yeah um i'm gonna leave a bunch of links down below to my goodreads if you want to see what i'm reading or what's on my tbr um i plan on making a tbr video pretty soon but yeah you can also follow me on instagram check out my blog muralsandmimosas.com all the self-promotion <laughs> uh you don't have to but if you want to it'll be linked down there and yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye Thank <laughs> you.